I guess, Daryl, in, in the final moments of the game, your team trailing by goal, what goes into this the decision to put certain players on the ice versus others? That game? Um, it depends if it's on the fly or face off. Okay. Yeah. So, the, if you, for example, you probably think about last night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we got killed on face offs. So, basically, we had Lindy and Bax both out there. So you got a righty lefty, right? So that was. So that does affect a lot of times you're going five and one, you know, like five forwards, one, one D or four and two, depending on how much time there is, and two radies on the bat, whatever. So there's a lot of different, it's not a set. And then when, you, when they do the timeout, it's just reinforcing, a, uh, usually you have a, depending on time, you have two or three set plays that you just want to reinforce. So it's not, it's not really anything new, but it's... Uh, but the personnel can change. So for Jonathan, who's a distributor, in that situation, you didn't see a, a fit for him like the last minute of yesterday's for game. For who? Uh, Hubert. Uh, yeah, I think it would if it would have been better in faceoffs than one of Lindy or or probably backs. Jonathan would have been for backs because that's a lefty. Right? But we needed the faceoff, and backs was going to take it. You know what have you got from Nick Ritchie since he's gotten here? Um, you know what I. Th- I think the the uh, mindset at the start was to to uh, I think we let him watch. I think it was one or two, and then try and see if we could find a spot for him in there somewhere. What have you liked from? What yeah, I think when he's got his feet moving and he's you know he's in the battle, he's he's an effective player. That's that's pretty evident. When you came to San Jose, you had to change a culture of that team to start getting it on a winning path. They're again in a situation where they have to get back to changing the culture and being on a winning yeah. path. The difficulties of that as a coach. When you talk about that way back then, the difference would be age groups, salaries, um, waivers, no waivers. You know what? Power. It was just like guys asking us today. They're talking about because somebody's minutes are down. Well, they missed three or four shifts, and everybody's going, "Well, oh, freaking coach has got <laughs> coach has got a problem." You have got no problem with anybody. You're just freaking trying to win hockey games. <laughs> Daryl, back in uh, 2007, did the scouts tell you if you took Michael Backlund, he'd probably play 900 some games? Pretty for awesome. I was talking about him last night walking out, and it's funny because his mom's in town and. And I hadn't seen his mom since the draft. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had a good visit with her, too. So it's pretty awesome. You know, it's, it, uh, it goes fast. Like, you think about it, somebody like Michael, and he's, and he's having a hell of a year. You know, he's having his numbers-wise and, and quite honest, performance-wise. It, it might be his best year. So it speaks volumes to, about him. Is it because it's becoming more and more rare that a guy plays that many just in one place? Does that make it more special? Yeah, I mean, I, even when you look at the, you know, we just came from the Vegas, off Vegas, and you looked at somebody like Jonathan Quick, and it was sort of the uh, big thing because he played so long in one place. But but uh, it's rare. I mean, you think about it, there's free agency now. The guys can hit the hit the road at, at 26, or you know, if they're not or. You know, they go through their bridge deal and they hit a home run and away they go. That's that's the way it works now. It's quite a bit different. I mean, you look, you think about it. Jonathan Quick was what 16 or 17 years, whatever it was, in one place, won a couple of cups, won Conn Smythe, All Star, signed a 10-year contract, all that stuff. Then he gets traded. And he was going, oh, geez. But the general manager is Rob Blake, who's a Hall of Famer, and he got traded too, and <laughs> to go in a couple times. And then he comes back to LA, so you know that's the way it all works. That's that's the way the game is now. And more teams, very simple. You get 32 teams, right? It used to be, you go, yeah, you you, th- you go from six to 32, and then you, as you go up, well, there's not that much, there's not that much movement, right? The only the movement is more between that level and this level, not between teams. So you see a lot more of it now. Daryl, when, when I was talking to Michael, and, and he said. Early in his career, prior to coming over here, he was all offense, and then you and and Brent kind of told him, "We need you to work on the other side of your game." What what did you see in his skill set that made you think that he could be a really 
good two-way guy. I think probably two things would, would have come in to that with Michael because I've seen him play the World Juniors at it, and on his team overseas in Sweden, right? So you see him at that level, and, you, and that's the reason he's a first-round pick. If you look in that draft, the centerman that went, um, I can think of four of them that went in that draft, right? And they, and they were all sort of in that same, one of them being Brandon, uh, my nephew Brandon, was in that one. And they were all similar type guys, right? But you could see with, with Bax that because he was, he was an elite player in his age group over there, that, so he was always on the power play, he was all that stuff, right? But then when you're, when you're like that, then maybe you don't pay quite as much attention to the detail part of it and what it's gonna take to play over here. Right, so then, so it was pretty easy to see his IQ. You know, you just watch him for a couple of games. It's pretty easy to see that the kid kn knew the game. You just got to play it, play the whole game. Right, so that's that's only just that wasn't. I don't think a whole lot of a whole lot of learning. I was just saying, hell yeah, I, that's that makes me a better player. And if you look at it, we brought him out of uh, I think it was the World Junior in Ottawa, and we brought him here, and the deal was play him in one game. And then sent him to Clonin because they had a chance to go to the Mem to go to the Mem Cup, right? So then he went to Clonin, and that probably helped him as much as anything. Like he never he went there and then played in the NHL after that. So it wasn't like he did his training in the American League or any of that. He was he was a step above that, and which means that just shows you the difference between that player. You know, when you talk about kids getting to play and developing and all that, it just tells you that he was quite a bit ahead of the of the curve. Has Backlund played well enough in your estimation to be considered for a Selkie trophy at the end of the year? Oh, for a better team. Right? If you go, if, you know, the, the, one of the reasons that, that we're not in a playoff spot is the goals for and against differential. And that's another one that pretty much holds water every year, too, if you look at it. So, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I think the sit, it's helped that's one way with Naz coming here that's really helped, right? It's, it's actually given, it hasn't put as much on Lindy. It's taken a couple of minutes away there, five and five. It's allowed Bax to, hey, Bax plays against pretty much most nights the top player, right? So give him full marks for that and being such a high plus player. So, uh, it's pr and then the face off part of it too, which is part of that. Uh, you're talking about Selkie too, which is, you know, that's a big part of his game. Daryl, you, you've talked about the IQ and, and everybody in here knows what kind of person he is. Is he playing with as much bite and investment in his game as maybe you've ever seen right now? Yeah, you know, I didn't see him for those three or four years yeah. other than three or four times a year. Right. So, you know, you just kind of appreciate his skill set. But um, I think... What I seen in the playoffs last year was he was our best forward other than Johnny Goodrow, to be quite honest. And the reason was because he was a really good competitor, and I think he brought that into he. You know what? We talked about it at the end of the year. He brought it into this year. It, it you know gave him a whole another look, and it showed that he could do it consistently, and he's done a really good job of it. Earlier, you're, you're in your second year of sort of rebuilding the culture over here, and is that trickier when you've got such a different guys from different organizations? That kind of you almost feel like you have to start sort of at the base level again. Or? Yeah, I think we we pretty much had to again. You know, when you do that much transformation at the top end of your lineup, it's it's a whole reset, and it hasn't been easy. What have been the challenges of, of doing that this season? Pardon? What have been those challenges that you referenced? I just think. The personalities are different, right? So you, you know, they got. It's not so much coach player; it's more of the player player. Right? That's that's way more important than than anything. It's the uh, connection in the room more than anything else. I'd say. Is that kind of where you want it to be right now, or? Well, obviously we're not in a playoff spot, so obviously it's not where I want it to be. <laughs>